What's happening, everybody? It is 12 o'clock, high noon. We'll be right with you. Stand by for Matt Chat Live. Thanks, Gene. All that, and, and Gene just told me there was no sound. Thanks, buddy. Yep, there's no sound on my live today because I had it muted when I came back in. I forgot to, to, to um, put the mic back on. Sorry. Good thing we just started. So my point was that we're, we're dealing with a lot of people that have fear, anxiety, panic, all kinds of things about coronavirus lately, and other things that are brought up as, as a result. And I want to come from a different perspective about about this with hope. I believe there's power in hope, and I hope to share with you a few things, keyword today, hope, that may help you to, to combat some of that. Now, in no way do I mean to diminish the virus, uh, coronavirus at all. Um, for a person like myself, uh, it could put me in the hospital and kill me. Uh, a lot of us it could, but for, with me battling stage four cancer and all the problems I've got in my body, uh, it could easily be something that could take me out. So I, I don't mean to take it and tread lightly. I, I mean to, to not think about it seriously and to, to kind of like deal with the severity of the issue of the virus. But at the same time, there's so much hype about it. There's so much stuff going on all the time, which is great to be aware, but there's a difference between being aware and being in fear. And um, I don't think that we need to be in fear uh, just to be prepared, right? So there's a big difference. So today I want to share with you a few things that I think are going to be helpful that can deal with with hope in the midst of time where hope seems not to be so easily found. Now for folks like us here on LinkedIn, we hear things like hope and, and um, uh, peace. We hear things like uh, fortitude and value, right? All kinds of words that we hear so often here on LinkedIn, specifically from a business perspective, uh, a mindset perspective, right? We're supposed to train our brains and do certain things and uh, it can be almost robotic at some times. Um, there's no doubt that it's important to have uh, effectual things in our lives, uh, habits and um, mindsets for sure, that help us to be able to handle certain situ situations and circumstances, easy for me to say, in our lives. But sometimes, you know, we kind of lose touch with some of the humanity side of things. And I've been able to learn some of those things in my life, specifically, personally, over the past few years with my battle of cancer. It's revealed some things to me that I wasn't really paying as much attention to before. Just get so busy with life and you get busy with things that you kind of forget what stuff's all about. So I want to kind of pull some of those things. I keep saying I want to kind of pull. I hate when I hate to say that kind of that kind of stuff. See, I did it again. I'm going to stop doing it. I want to share with you some things that I find that are helpful. I did this not too long ago as part of a, a article I did here on LinkedIn, but I want to expound upon it today, especially in the lens of coronavirus. So again, one more time, we're talking about the power of hope in the midst of coronavirus, all right? So there are so many things I wanna to talk to you about. There's eight points that I wanna share with you today. I'm gonna to pull it up on the screen here in a moment. I'm gonna disappear, we're gonna have a slide. You'll hear me talking. Yes, there will be audio this time. Thanks, Gene, for bailing me out on that one. I forgot to unmute it when I came back in. Um, but one of the most uh, impactful feelings you'll ever experience is definitely, it's definitely hope. It's so powerful. It's been a big, big influence in my life. And hope really occurs when we, center our, our, when we center our expectations on something. It's when we really focus in on some things that hope can really be prevalent. It's when we're all about nothing and we, we can't zero in on anything that hope really seems to be fleeting. It doesn't seem to be something that exists in our life. We, we can think about it. We know that there's a possibility. Maybe it works for somebody else. It doesn't work for me. But without that focus, without that way to zero in on certain things, hope can just be a four-letter word. 
can think of a lot of four letter words, but hope is one of them. All right, so there's a big difference. Your hope is like a wish that something can happen. For some folks, they like, what is hope, right? There's a lot of different versions of, of hope that are out there. I think there's there's only a couple that are, are, are true standing, but you know, trying to bring it down into a perspective, what is hope? It's kind of like a wish, a wish for something to happen. Like you, you really fervently want this thing to happen. That's kind of what hope is. The even better news is that your wish can be a request. And for me, it's a request in prayer. I know that as a follower of Christ, that my hope is in him and I can pray and believe God for things to occur in my life. I've seen it happen time and time again. Hope is a powerful weapon, the power of hope. All right, so I wanna switch, switch. I wanna switch screens here in a moment. Here we go, I'm gonna flip over here. There you go to the power of hope, a special study from God's word about hope and freedom from fear. All right, so when you consider the points that uh, will increase your power with hope. And I've got, I've got eight of those today. I'll pop back in here in just a moment. I'm not gonna go through all eight in a row. We'll, uh, we'll break it up a little bit and, and talk in between. I was hoping to have a guest here today, but um, we're gonna work that out another time. I got it all set up, but uh, next time we'll work it out. I had a friend that I wanted to bring on, but I couldn't get a hold of him in time to get on, on the show, but uh, next time. All right, so the power of hope. All right, so, so here's the four things we're gonna go through uh, on the front side. Number one, Hope plants a seed. So, so whenever you you yearn for something, having hope is an implication that it can actually occur, right? So again, I said hope occurs when we center our expectations on something, and hope plants a seed. So whenever you yearn for something, having hope is an implication that it could actually happen. It could really occur. So hope, it can germinate into a whole new existence, right? So it's something that you could plant and something that can germinate into something brand new. It's an amazing way how that works. It's pretty powerful. All right, your life's journey can be enhanced simply by having hope. Isn't that cool? Your life's journey can be enhanced just, just by having hope. All right, number two. In order to feel hopeful, honesty is required. Let's get real. Sometimes it's not easy to be honest, even with ourselves. It's many times when we get to a point where, where we end up being the best liar to, to ourselves. It's not always easy to be honest. Um, for example, you know, I'm thinking with me with the terminal disease. You know, the first reaction when people are told they are going to die is, what? <laughs> you know, it's that first reaction is like, you've got to be kidding me. Because it just doesn't seem like it's real, right? So here's the thing. We, we have to be honest. Honesty is required. We've all experienced times when we're fooling ourselves about something like um, a relationship or a work situation. But to have hope, we're forced to be honest about what we've done to create the challenge. We have to force ourselves to be honest, right? It says right here um, about what we've done to create the challenge. So that's a personal reflection. That is a personal responsibility and a personal accountability. First and foremost, being honest with yourself and saying, I'm going to take responsibility, what I've done to create the challenge. So before we go pointing any fingers, something I've learned a long, long time ago, many of you may have heard, is when you're pointing a finger, and you're pointing a finger this way, I've got three, four more pointing back at me. Well, three of the thumb pointing back at me. So you got more pointing back at yourself than you do pointing at somebody else. So focus on where, where everything originates, and that's right within yourself. Quit blaming things or people. You can look at that stuff later. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's not a guilty thing out there. But the first place to look at is yourself. So when it comes to, to dealing with this type of, of a problem, this type of scenario, this kind of situation, honesty is required to find out what we've done to create the challenge. All right. Okay. So here's a couple of ideas about that. Only a little bullet point. Only if you tell yourself the truth about a trying situation, can you really go ahead and experience hope. It's only if you tell yourself the truth about that challenge, about that trying situation, 
you can proceed ahead and experience hope. The seeds planted by hope, they really flourish by the water of truth in your life. The seeds of hope flourish when they're watered by truth in your life. That's a powerful picture, right? So if we continue to water those seeds of hope in our life by first taking on honesty to look at ourselves, that, that's my situation, my, my response, my accountability, then truth will be the water to those seeds of hope. That's pretty powerful. That's power in the power of hope. All right. So number three, hope produces a can-do spirit. All right. Number three, you got right here. You can see uh, my little cursor, maybe. There we go. Number three, hope produces a can-do spirit. Mm. For example, if you want your relationships to be better, you can draw on the hope within you. The desire to want a deep and more connected partnership, it's rooted in a hope that you can put the relationship back on track. I mean, it's like saying, I actually believe this can get better. I hope that this happens. That's first is by taking responsibility, being honest with yourself, watering those seeds of hope with truth and saying, I really believe that this can get, this can get better. It's totally, totally possible, right? So you know, it just starts with you. You've really got to push forward into what that looks like in your own life. So, you know, the next step is to say, you know, what can I do to make the relationship grow? I mean, hope, hope cultivates a personal sense of responsibility and ownership. I've talked about that just a moment ago. But only then do you have the power to convince yourself that you can truly affect a change in your life. It's a big deal. You've got to start where the rubber meets the road. And that's, that's here. It's right, right in yourself. You have to take the responsibility, accountability to look at the number one situation, number one cause, and that's you. Whether it's somebody else's fault or not, doesn't matter. Hope, the power of hope, if it's going to be activated, has to be activated in you to affect anything inside of your life, all right? All right, so we're going to look at number four. Hope often leads you to the answer. So when you're, when you're clueless about how to resolve a difficult issue, when you just have no idea, you resort to hoping the issue will be resolved somehow, right? Like, I don't know how it's going to happen. I just hope that it will. Hmm. So your thoughts begin to really go through all the ins and outs of figuring out the challenge. But before you know it, you've hit on something that might be helpful to your situation. All right, so the power of hope and a community review. I don't really have a chance uh, today to go through comments live while we're doing the broadcast here today, but I'll, I'll come back through and uh, take a chance to look to see what you may have said. For those of you that are following along today live, or for those of you joining me here on the replay, uh, this is a chance for you to actually jump in and, and ask some of those questions or, or review. So again, we've gone back. Uh, let me go back to the previous slide here. We've got four things. Number one, hope plants a seed. Uh, number two, in order to feel hopeful, honesty is required. Number three, hope produces a can-do spirit. And number four, hope often leads you to the answer. So when we realize that we have an expectation on something, when we center our expectations on something, that's when hope occurs. Then we realize these four things, that hope plants a seed, in order to feel hopeful, honesty is required, hope produce, produces a can-do spirit, and hope often lead you to the answers. That's a powerful place to experience the power of hope. So what kind of questions might you have so far? What kind of comments might you have so far? Lord knows we've got plenty of, of, of opinions out there, uh, plenty of ideas, and there are some powerful ones. There's some things that I, I'm not saying. I mean, we could go longer and deeper and wider for sure. I'm just trying to narrow in on a few points here right now. But I'm sure there's some things out there you all can help out with is in the comments section. So if you have some ideas elaborating upon what we've talked about so far, I'd love for you to put those in the comments section. And I'll come back to that and, uh, and I'll actually review that. And if there's enough of the comments there, I'll pull those all together and we'll do another live 
uh, sometime next week and, and review what we've been talking about today so far. All right, so I also promise you that I'm going to use uh, today's opportunity on Sunday uh, to give you some perspective from God and from the Bible as to what we're learning about hope today. So I've got a few scriptures that'll be coming along uh, along the next few points that I hope you'll find helpful to shine some light on, on what this all means as far as the power of hope, okay? So let's jump back into the slides here, and we're going to move on into a, a few other things things here, like what is battling against your hope in life? Right now, for a lot of people, it's coronavirus, COVID-19. There's no doubt that coronavirus is the most talked about worry, the panic, the fear that's out there right now. Hope is a powerful weapon to resist panic. Hope is a powerful weapon to resist panic. It's a powerful, powerful thing to think of and understand. So, Let's jump in a couple of stats I'd like to share with you. The power of hope can resist panic. Here's a few things that you, you could look at when it comes down to some things that have been panic. Uh, when people are talking about coronavirus, the first thing they are thinking about now is how people are going to be affected and or killed by this disease. So let's look at some stats about what things are that are killing people here in the United States specifically and across the world. And number one would be traffic accidents in the United States of America. For example, I got some stats went back to 2016. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration shows that 37,461 people were killed in 34,436 motor accidents. That's an average of motor vehicle crashes, I'm sorry, an average of 102 a day. In 2016, there were 102 people on average per day being killed in the United States of America by an automobile accident. 102 a day in the United States of America. Talk about a pandemic. That's a big deal. There's a lot of issues that are happening that are something that requires our attention. And the power of hope can release some powerful forces into the world through us that can make a big difference. Let's look at some more stats here. All right, so then worldwide, how about airplane accidents? In 2018, um, 160 incidents were recorded, including 13 fatal accidents, accounting for some 534 deaths. If I recall in my research of that, uh, it was one airplane, it was over 180 people died in just in one one of those crashes in, uh, in 2018. Um, all these numbers are horrific. One, one is too many. But uh, let's just look at this. I mean, worldwide, you're looking at several deaths that were caused by, by airplane accidents. And just in the United States, we had over 37,000 people die just here in one year in automobile accidents. Again, I mean no way to diminish coronavirus, but I want to bring some things into perspective today. Let's look at one more uh, fact I'd like to share with you, the world death rates, miscellaneous rates, all right? So in the world, miscellaneous rates here, heart disease, um, almost 650,000 people died uh, last year. Uh, or Yeah, I think it was 2018 was these stats. Uh, 600, almost 650,000 people with heart disease, almost 600,000 people with cancer, um, Let's see, 170,000 people with uh, unintentional injuries, chronic lower respiratory diseases, 160,000 people, chronic lower respiratory diseases, stroke, 146,000 plus, Alzheimer's disease, 121,000, diabetes, over 83,000, influenza and pneumonia, all right, so influenza, the flu, and pneumonia, which has been proven that the flu kills more people than coronavirus does, but influenza and pneumonia, over 55,000 people in one year. That's not, that's not cases with, that's people died from. That's deaths that occurred in one year, 55,000. Nephritis, nephrotic syndrome, and nephrosis, 50,000 plus, and intentional self-harm or suicide, um, over 47,000 people have died in that year. Um, by these horrible things. All right, so resist panic. This isn't to say there's no reason to be concerned or that we should ignore the sound advice of medical professionals and public health experts. I in no way, again, mean to do that. But panic and fear, well, they're just not from God. Now, calm and hope, that's from God. 
and it's possible to respond to a crisis seriously and deliberately while maintaining an inner sense of calm and hope. It's possible to maintain that inner sense of calmness and hope when your perspectives are set properly. It's possible. So here's a scripture I'd like to share with you. Exodus, it's in the Old Testament. Exodus 23, 30, 25. Exodus 23, 25 says, You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from among you. So again, he'll bless your bread and your water and take sickness away from you. So that means he will be a provider. He will give you enough to eat and enough to drink, and he will be the one that can take sickness away from you. That's a powerful, powerful version of hope. It is a truth provided to us through the Bible, Exodus 23, 20, been there for a long, long time, that he will be a provider in many, many ways. That's hope. Right? Whether you believe it or not, it is an example of hope that is provided for us to tech to start with the honesty and truth that's inside of ourselves, right? To be able to say, how can I react to this? How can I act upon this? How can I trust this? How can I believe in this? All those types of scenarios. It's a great truth, Exodus 23, 25. That's an Old Testament. That's like the beginning of the Bible time versus the New Testament, which is when Jesus, after Jesus came, the New Testament, prior to the New, Jesus was the Old Testament, right? So the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible, this is a scripture where we're told about the promises of God in our lives to provide for us and to help us through circumstances and situations. All right, so uh, something else I'd like to share with you at this point is our next four points, number five through eight, and hope, hope can cultivate your imagination. So creativity and imagination are necessary when you're really hoping for something to grow or hoping for something to change in a positive way. You stretch yourself by considering resolutions you hadn't considered before. Hope cultivates your imagination. Creativity and imagination aren't necessary when you're hoping for something to grow or change in a positive way. It's some cool stuff, right? How in the world can we get hope in our lives? Well, it, it cultivates our imagination. We talked about how hope can be the water to the seeds. Hopes are seeds, and, and the, the truth hope can cultivate, as we're saying here, and be able to expand and grow in our lives. Hope really has a chance to help things grow. It can give you some 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 ability to say I can do, right? That can do ism we talked about here just a couple of moments away, a moments ago. All right, so hope cultivates your imagination. All right, point number six is that hope enhances your personal commitment to the issues at hand. When you've thought about enough and you've been uh, dealing with like a vexing challenge, you're likely committed to overcoming that challenge. When you think about it a lot and you've been dealing with it and toiling with it, you're, you're more likely to overcome it because it's a front and center kind of a deal. And then they, when you do that, you kind of come up with all kinds of ideas of how you can make things happen. It's not like you have a, a, something you think about all the time and never have a way to get over it or through it. Like it never comes to your mind. Of course it does. And of course you talk about other people and they're going to give you ideas. Uh, it's up to you to take those into your life and say, well, how can, this, how can this be watered with hope so it can actually cultivate into a place and a point in my life where it comes to fruition, right? So your hope enhances your personal commitment to issues at hand. So personal commitment sets you up to sharpen your focus and find a way to create the end result, end result, end result that you desire. Say it again, personal commitment. You see it here in point number six. Personal commitment sets you up to sharpen your focus and find a way to create the end result that you desire. What's that for you right now? What's that circumstance or situation in your life right now? It could be corona, it could be a lot of other things. But what is that thing in your life right now that you're having you're wanting to find that end result that you desire. What is that for you today? Is there something right now that you're hoping for? Is there something that you're wanting, not necessarily a the end, but uh, an ending step to the next next place, 
Is there a place you want to get through? I use the word breakthrough. Um, so a place you'd like to, to come to the challenge, overcome it, and move on to the next place, which means another challenge. It means more places where you're going to feel like you're inferior, where you can't make it happen again. That's how we grow. So what are some of those end results you desire right now in your life? If you could share that in the comments section below, I'd love to see what some of those are. If you could be you know, transparent enough to share some of those, I'd really appreciate it. It gives us a chance to really talk about it in community and, and uh, I'll come back and review that with us in, in another live if we can and, and kind of just go through it, see what we think together. It'd be fun. So just write some of those things down. What are some of those places for you right now? The end result you desire, what's that for you? All right, number seven, hope springs from within you. Now, hope is free and available. It's an awesome, awesome gift. The purest form of strength and power in your life, it emerges completely from inside of you. Only your own thoughts and desires are needed. Hope is free and it's available to you at any time you wish to tap into it. It's free and available anytime you wish to tap into it. Now, I'm so, so grateful that back in the day, uh, yours truly had a problem with drugs and alcohol and all kinds of crazy things in my life. I had a, well, I guess I still have an addictive personality. It's just my addictions have changed. Thankfully, not the ones that are so destructive. Uh, but I, I was, you know, bound by drugs and alcohol. And uh, I didn't think that I could get away from it. Uh, but if it wasn't for somebody else sharing with me the truth of the gospel that I, I was able to hear uh, from a perspective that I had never heard before, from someone going through something I was going through at the same time, it just clicked. And I was able to fully understand and see my need. I didn't understand completely who Jesus was, but I understood my need for him in my life. And then he took time to unpack things that's taken, I've been a follower of Christ now for over 30 years, 31, let's see, uh, yeah, 32 years now. Um, it's important to understand that that doesn't mean that every time you, you get like a, an answer to something doesn't mean you have it all figured out. <laughs> sometimes it's a process and uh, it's a big process sometimes. Sometimes you get immediate results, and other times it just takes time to work it out. So here's another scripture moving forward a little bit in the Bible. It was Exodus was the first one I gave you. I'm moving into a, a, a scripture in Job. Good grief. For those of us that, that know about the Bible, you know who Job was. And uh, Job had a fun life. He was a carefree guy, loving life, living the dream, right? Not so much, not always. He had a horrible, horrible life for a period of his time, and it was a really tough moment. So... Uh, it was a, a powerful, it's a powerful book to read. If you get a chance to check out Job and there's a lot, a lot of great things in there. Some that kind of blows your mind. Like, I don't get why this is possible. Why would this guy even want to be a, a God follower at that time in his life? He would have every reason to, to run away, but he didn't. And one of the scriptures I'd like to share with you today comes out of Job. It's Job eleven eighteen. 18. Uh, you'll see it here in, in red, point number seven. Uh, it says, and you will feel secure because there is hope. You will look around and take rest in your security. That's awesome, right? Job eleven eighteen, and you will feel secure because there is hope. Hope secures. What a powerful statement and a powerful truth. It's so, so true. Hope does secure. It's what gives me the ability to be who I am. The guy you guys see all the time who's mostly Mr. Positive, inspirational, motivational guy. And I promise you, it's not always that way. I'm not on camera all the time. I blow it. And there's many times that I am not so positive. However, I keep coming back, don't I? Why? Because there's hope and we feel secure because of hope. Right? And then it says in Job eleven eighteen, you'll look around and take rest in your security. What security? The security that hope provides. Without it, it's an insecure place, a place of insecurity. Who wants that? Nobody signs up, hi, I wanna be insecure for the rest of my life. 
Now, some of us resolve to be insecure because we choose not to go for things. That's another story. It's possible to get out of it, hope. <laughs> However, hope provides security. What powerful scripture. And you will feel secure because there's hope. Job 11, 18. So in the midst of this time we're experiencing, all the news channels that are talking about it, everything online, schools closing everywhere, uh, churches closing down for services, uh, stores being sold out of bread and milk and water and stuff. All right, you'll feel secure because there's hope. In the case of coronavirus, I believe there's hope for a cure. I believe there's not a time more prevalent and a time more than now that somebody is working on a cure for something like this disease. Folks, there's people working around the clock to figure out a way to get this fixed. That's hope. It's going to be done. Now, in the meantime, not going to be so fun, but there is security, a place to feel secure because of hope. And you'll look around and you'll take rest in security. It's power in rest and security from hope. There's power in hope, all right? So hope springs from within you. All right, number eight, the last point I have on the slide today. Hope allows you to accept and forgive others. Why in the world would I talk about acceptance and forgiveness in a slide presentation like this today where there's power in hope? What in the world are you doing here, Matt? Well, I know, sorry, a little, uh, I'm not trying to be underhanded here with you, but the result is you have to forgive. You have to release things in your life for, for yourself to be, remember the first part was be honest with yourself, to be truly free to experience hope in the fullness that it can have, to release that gift and power into the lives of other people, you know, you have to accept and forgive others. It doesn't mean you have to believe everything people say. For example, um, I don't know, think of something really out there. So let's say somebody was convicted of being a pedophile, a child molester, all right? Nobody can stand a child molester. Nobody likes to think about it. They exist. It's unfortunate. I'm a, a parent, and, oh, man, I don't even know I think what would happen if that, if that happened. I don't want to. However, we have to learn to accept. So me to say I accept a child molester <laughs> by no means says that I agree with anything that child molester did or stands for. Um, what that does mean is that I'm willing to say that this person, who's a human being, almost, right, in some people's minds, well, that's not even a human being, yeah, he is or she is, um, that you have to accept and forgive them. It doesn't mean they deserve it. it. doesn't mean that they embody it. It means that we release people because when you don't, you are imprisoning yourself. You put yourself into a prison that becomes bitterness, anger, frustration, um, self-seeking, all kinds of things start happening when you don't release people. For me, I release people to God. It's like, I can't in my own power release this person who's wronged me or has wronged other people or done something that I feel like I want to kill them over. But God, only you can really handle this person. I'm not the one who can, so I release them to you. I forgive them. I release them. I accept who they are as a human being, that you love them as much as you love me. I don't know how you can, but you do. So they're yours, right? And then I move on. I don't do it anymore. I let it go. And then you can move forward, right? So there's, let me get into this a little bit more. I don't want to go too far into this today, but it's a point that needs to be heard. Hope allows you to accept and forgive others. Many times the path you seek can only be paved by your complete acceptance of others and your ability to forgive them. I gave you a huge example there. It could be a lot of different things. It could be somebody that wronged you in business. It could be a, a, dis, a disagreement or argument with somebody. I mean, there's lots of different ways to, to expound upon that. But I read that again. Many times the path you seek can only be paved by your complete acceptance of others and your ability to forgive them. 
Now, we'll all be exposed to those who annoy us and, and you know, drive us crazy. And unfortunately, we're going to get hurt by the actions and words of others at some point or another in our lives. There's no doubt it's going to happen. However, having hope, it, encourage us, it encourages us to move past these positions of powerlessness and discover that there's something very important here. <laughs> there's something really important there that we could discover. Is that you can have acceptance of others, and there is also the ability to forgive. There truly is the ability to forgive. It comes through hope. It's the power of hope. Possessing hope enables you to perform challenging acts and believe the unbelievable. It's so, so true. All right, we've all been exposed to those moments in our lives. Uh, however, having hope encourages us to move past these positions. You'll see here in point number eight, I have underneath hope allows you to accept and forgive others. However, having hope encourages us to move past those positions of powerless, powerlessness and discover the true strength of our character. No one starts off wanting to be bitter. It's something that takes root in our lives if we don't release it. Folks, it's so, so important to today. And coronavirus is a great opportunity for us to examine our own hearts and to see if there's things in our lives that are holding us back from, from acknowledging the truth in our own lives and to say, what's holding me back from hope? What's making me think that the world's falling apart? What's making me think that this is the end? What's making me think that there's nothing that can be done? Because there is. It all starts inside of you, right? All right, so... Here's some scriptures, some power verses I want to give you today as I shared and promised you that I wanted to give you some, some, some scriptures that I think would be great examples of hope that you might find helpful in your life today for those of us, of us that are followers of Christ or even uh, my Jewish friends that are uh, believers in the Old Testament. There's a lot of Old Testament truths here that are, are very powerful too. I've got a few, couple of those versions here as well. All right, so first one that a lot of people may have heard is Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, it's the first Pentagon shape right there you'll see. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. <laughs> I screwed up. I got declare is, <laughs> declares the Lord. Plans for, oh man, my whole cutoff's there. Anyway, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. All right, so this is very important. It's one of my favorite scriptures, and it's, it's a lot of scripture favorites for, for a lot of other folks, too. Uh, I know the plans I have for you, declares God. I know what I've got planned for you, right? He's the one who has it all, the master plan. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Um, declares the Lord, not just like a you know, comment or a little you know, side note. No, declares. That's a declaration. Um, plans for, for welfare and not for evil. Plans for your good not for your destruction, uh, to give you a future and a hope. So how awesome is that for a guy like me battling stage four cancer, a terminal disease, that I have a promise in Jeremiah 29, 11 that says he plans to give me a future and a hope. When you're told you're gonna die and somebody promises you a future, there's a little conflict that occurs. And because I believe in God, because my hope is in him, because my identity's in him, I could say, wow, I've got a future. I don't have to be sitting here worried every day that I've got cancer and I'm going to die. It doesn't mean I neglect the facts and truth of what's going on in my body, but I believe in a higher power. I believe in a, an ultimate absolute truth, and I believe that there is ability for me to be completely healed. It's what he did. So I believe there's a chance for a future and a hope. Same thing here with coronavirus. There's a, a, a hope for you. There's a future for you. It's not the end of the world. It's a time to wash your hands and, and not cough in people's faces and think smart and not go to small, tiny little cramped spots. And, you know, you get the point. However, it's not the end of the world. All right, here's another scripture that I thought that would be great to share with you today. Hebrews 10, 23, the second one here. It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Faithful. Let's hold fast to the confession of our hope. Let's hope, let's hold fast to that without wavering. For he who promised it is faithful. Lamentations 3.24, what a powerful book in the Bible. Lamentations 3.24, it says, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope 
in him. Hope. I'm thankful that I have a a source, a location, a reference point for hope. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't have hope at all. There's no reason to have hope if I don't have a reference point of what it looks like. And I do. And I've got tons of examples of what that looks like. And I'm sharing just a very, very few with you today. All right, Lamentations 3, 24, Old Testament example. New Testament, Romans 12, 12. Paul, the apostle Paul wrote this, says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. All right, so there's a three-point message for all of us uh, friends out there that are used to, to a good old Baptist sermon. Here's your three points, right? Rejoice in hope, number one. Be patient in tribulation, two. And be constant in prayer. In prayer. Rejoice, be patient, and constant. Rejoice, be patient, <laughs> and be constant. So rejoice. Yes, this is going to happen. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Be patient. I'm. It hasn't happened, but I'm believing it's going to happen. It hasn't happened, but I'm believing it's going to happen. And be constant. That's the. I believe it's going to happen. Be constant in prayer. So rejoice, be patient, and be constant. Stand firm in what you believe. Quit wishy-washing. Don't say, I believe one thing today, and then you don't believe it the next day. It doesn't mean that there's things you can't say, well, that was a stupid thing to believe. Like, I don't know, I believe I can stand on the bridge and jump off of the tallest bridge in the world and not die. That's dumb. You're going to die. <laughs> right? So there's, there's differences in what we're talking about here. But rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. That's what I'm doing with my life right now. All right, next one. Uh, and last one I share with you today, Hebrews uh, 6, 19, and our hope power verses for today. We have this as a steadfast anchor of the soul. What a what an image that is, a steadfast anchor of the soul. We have this, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain, a hope that enters to the inner place. I have a hope in me behind the curtain, this flesh, there's deeper uh, theological point of view here to this scripture, but I'm just going to bring it down here really quick. The elementary would be in this body, I have hope in me behind this curtain, behind this mess, this junk, this stage four cancer, this guy with adrenal insufficiency. Uh, my adrenal gland's gone. I'm chronic fatigue, chronic pain. I take 32 pills a day. I was a drug addict in my best life. I was an alcoholic. Uh, then I was a, a victoriously saved and set free. I was a pastor for over 30 years. I'm still proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. I'm a guy who's told he's going to be dead. I had eight months to live. It's been over three years since I was told that. I'm still alive right? I'm still battling with a disease that should have killed me. I've been told by the doctors at Duke, the number one doctors in the world that I walk in the door, they say, hey, you're not supposed to be here. Your brain tumor should have killed you. You're still here, right? And now I've got another mass, another thing in my brain. <laughs> and they're saying, this is what they told me last week from the tumor board. You're unique. We don't know what to do in this situation, so they're, they're bewildered as to my aliveness, <laughs> if you will. And I'm not. I know why I'm here. And hope was the key. Hope was what gave me that strength, right? Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and constant in prayer. Powerful, powerful stuff. We will face disease, pain, and sorrow. But will we face it alone? No, you don't have to. You do not have to face it alone. And hope is what can get you to the other side of panic and fear, disease, pain, sorrow, right? You don't have to face it alone. You're not, you're not, you're not alone. All right, so here comes a little bit of a, uh, uh, seems kind of commercial, but I do want to offer you the opportunity to understand how to, how to move forward with some of these things in your life. And maybe some of this has resonated with you. All right, so you can visit my website at matcrump.tv, uh, not because I want your money, but because I do have a bunch of resources available to you there. Uh, you'll go there and find several different links. And uh, yeah, there's some things to talk about me being a coach and uh, my speaking and traveling and do all the things that I do. But there's other pages inside that website if you look around. 
that can help you. I've got a hope page there with some more details about hope that you might find. I've got some resources for folks that are dealing uh, with, with cancer or terminal diseases. Um, I've written a book called God's Got This, which is a, a book of hope. Shows you how in hopeless situations, there was always a hope revealed. The show I do on, on Tuesdays, my podcast, is a, is a part of my life. I'm just sharing it with you. And those things are available to you. So there's a lot of resources that you could find there that would be helpful for you. Um, uh-oh. I'm going to still record and see what happens here. It says the connection ended, but hopefully our upload will be able to continue on. So here's a few things. You can go to mattcrump.tv. I'll wrap it up then. You can find those resources I talked to you about. You can also look into my coaching program called The Flip, a one-on-one coaching or group coaching that's available for you. Also here on LinkedIn, I've got tons of resources, hundreds of videos uh, and resources I have available for you right here on the, uh, on the page. All right, one other thing that's available to you is Matt Chat Live, something I'm going to be doing here, I'm doing it now, and we'll be doing more of bringing people on with me to go through topics like we did today. We're talking about hope, and we might dig into other topics like this and uh, have a guest that we can go back and forth with and, and share different points of views, not just mine, and uh, something that would be beneficial to you. I hope that you would enjoy that as well. So I want you to be able to experience that in your own life. I hope that you will. All right, so I'm going to cut this down now because we're about uh, about done with all these points I wanted to hit. If you'd like uh, the notes or the slides to this today, just DM me and I'd be happy to give that to you. I'm hoping you'll get this side of the broadcast because it got cut off on LinkedIn, but I'm hoping that it doesn't get uh, cut off here on the recording and I can upload this and you'll have the ending. Um, and that is that you're not alone, that there's power and hope, and there is always going to be an opportunity for you to see the other side. There it is but you can't go it alone, you need help. And if I can help you, I'm here to help you overcome life obstacles so you can achieve your number one goal and experience a life of abundance. I mean it when I say it. If you'd like that, visit me at mattcrump.tv or hit me up here in the DM and let's talk about what it looks like to be in a coaching relationship with me and experience the flip for yourself, all right? Thanks so much for your time today. I hope that as we go through this horrible, horrible outbreak of coronavirus, we know that there is hope, that it is not the end, and that you have the opportunity to release hope into this world as well. Don't be someone who produces um, fear. Be someone who produces hope because the world needs it. All right, my friends, thank you so much for being with me today again. My name is Matt Crump. I'm so, so grateful that you were able to join some time with me here live from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And uh, I surely hope that you'll have a chance to come back again and see me the next time right here on Matt Chat Live.